Okay. <laughs> nice. Just. All right. The recording is in progress. So tonight's lesson is supply management one tac two five discrepancy reporting. Our terminal objective is perform the functions of supply management. And our enabling objectives are to prepare a supply discrepancy report, also known as the SDR, and to prepare a quality deficiency report, a QDR, and then review defective materials. Our references are the 485 and your appropriate TICOM instruction. Um, here listed is ComNav SIR4 instruction, but it's whoever your TICOM is. All right, so let's get to it. Our two major types of discrepancy reports are a supply discrepancy report and a product quality deficiency report. So a supply discrepancy report happens whenever you get an overage or a shortage. Um, your material is damaged due to how it was shipped the inappropriate quantities were received or um, the wrong product or they send you an empty box um, which has happened before and so a, a main distinction i really want to make with sdrs that aren't here if it is coming from a vendor or like a commercial entity outside of the government you will submit an sdr for any dollar value. If it is a government entity, it is anything that's $100 or over. And then there's also a bunch of other options. And we'll talk about those here in just a little bit. And then the quality deficiency report is if the material does not meet specs. So this is typically associated with safety issues as well as um, just quality. Right. Talking about the SDR, the supply discrepancy report. Purpose is to identify, correct, and prevent further discrepancies. And so this is to make sure that, hey, this is being boxed right, that DLA or whatever government entity that is shipping it to you is packaging things appropriately, or that a vendor is doing things right. With this process, whenever you are filling out the paperwork with it, it will be logged in a system called PDRAP. So I just want to reiterate that supply discrepancy reports are very important. It is time consuming and it will stop you from continuing on your daily work, but it will save the government a lot of money by educating them that they are doing something wrong. And by them, I mean either the government or the end, the vendor. The form used with this is SF-364. And that form is built in the PD rep system. The PD rep system is easy to use um, and it creates a ledger of everything that you do. Then you can just print that out from the system and you can keep that on. So this is when discrepancies are attributed to shippers though. So if you are transporting it from your command and you are doing it and you mess it up, that, that is not included. So again, it's if something gets damaged in shipment, loss in shipment, overages, shortages, as well as um, if you have any hazmat issues, that's something that will go in there. And so if you want an exhaustive list, you can go to page 384 in the NASA P 485. And it goes on to page 385, and it gives you a list of all those repetitive discrepancies. So if it is below $100 from a government agency, 
to you and it is something that consistently happens, you need to let them know with an SDR. If it's not appropriately labeled, so the technical data markings aren't there, so you can't really tell what the product is, then you need to report that. If it's shipped to the wrong activity, so if you get another commands material, you need to submit that as well, regardless of. And then there, there are a lot more. So within the supply discrepancy report, there's the shipping discrepancies and the packaging discrepancies. I, I just want to go back a little bit and say, when we started this, we talked about types of discrepancy reports. So there's supply discrepancy report, quality deficiency report. Within the supply discrepancy report, there's shipping type and packaging type. So packaging discrepancies could be things like um, the box isn't sufficient to make sure that the product gets there appropriately. So maybe it should have had a crate and they put it in a cardboard box or they put excessive material in there. So uh, maybe it didn't need a crate and they put it in one and it could have been done in a cardboard box. That's causing excess costs to the government. Again, if you have hazmat, that's packed in, packaged incorrectly, that needs to be annotated, or if anything's packaged in a way that is dangerous to someone, if it could cause um, death, injury, et cetera. And those are the main ones, but um, there is a complete list on page 385, and the threshold for packaging discrepancies is 50 from government agents. Shipping ones are $100. What questions do you all have so far? All good, sir. All right. So what you see on the screen here is a supply discrepancy report. And it's also listed in your publication. It is on page 388 is an example. And so with this, you'll have data preparation. That should be pretty obvious as to what it is. A report number is locally generated. So it's gonna have your UIC the year and a locally generated serial number. So they will be sequential. You'll have the to and from, the shipper's name, uh, the number and date of invoice, transportation document, so um, a government bill of lading, way bills, et cetera. And then shipper's number, so that is contact information, I contract information, not contact information. So if this was purchased under a contract, you need to annotate that there. The next block, block 7B, is office administrating that contract. Block 8 is the requisition. 9 is all the data about the product. And if you look at block 10D, you'll see a code there. And then block 11, you'll see a code as well. And so the one on ND can be found on the document itself, frequency code. And on the, on the 364, the SDR, we click down a few pages into this, this cropped example. On the form itself, there are a list of these discrepancy codes. And so you'll just annotate what the problem was with this pack. All right, so this is where we have started to fill one out. So you can see date prepared was filled out, report number, 
two from shipper. And then we're going to move on. So this is the SDR halved and screenshotted. Um, so it, it doesn't line up perfectly, but you can see block 10D is the discrepancy code and then the action code and block 11 is also listed on the 354. So if you see right below block 12, the remarks block, there are discrepancy codes, the top of the discrepancy codes and the top of the action codes listed. And that just allows people to track um, in the database what the issues are coming from. And so they can do trend analysis and so they can send it also to the right department. It. Block 12 will be any remarks. You're gonna wanna answer the who, what, where, when, why, and how, as well as um, the probable cause and the suggest, suggested correction, corrective action. Um, so you want to provide a possible solution and try and figure out what happened. Now, you're not going to put too much energy into this, but if you have a solution, it is always better to share that. Um, so, sir, uh, for the block 11 action code, um, that means that's the action we require whoever received this form to take. Is that right? Or is the action we're supposed to take? So it is the action you're going to be taking. Oh, um, OK. So if most of the time with an SDR, you're going to keep it on the shelf for a certain amount of time. Um, okay. So you will material being retained. But if you are going to retain it until you receive uh disposition instructions then you'll put the the one alpha there which is the most common okay so you'll submit it and you'll say awaiting disposition instruction one alpha okay thank does you does that sir. answer your question yes sir okay all right moving down you'll see Block 13, and that is funding and accounting data. And that is not for a supply material or supply discrepancy report. That is only for packaging discrepancies. And that is how much it will cost for that shipping issue. And then it, whoever is filling out this document their information is listed in 14A, and 14B is where they will sign. Block 15 is if you are required to distribute this to other people, that will be listed there. And you'll typically find that in your TICOM instruction. What questions do we have on the SDR? So do you know if the uh, 485 has an example of the, the SDR with these uh, instruction on them, sir? Great question. So on page 387 in the 485, uh, yes, 387, and that is page 4, tack 2-4. There is an example of the front and the back, and it is much easier to see than this PowerPoint here. Yes, and, so I, I see it. And beneath that, on page 389, is an explanation of each individual block. So, great question, and the details for this are, are very good. So. It walks you through block by block on how to fill it. Yes, so thank you, sir. It's almost like the mill strip, like per number, but this one's per block. Or actually your eval, I mean fit rep. <laughs> yeah, that one. Yeah. Mill strip <laughs> is a little bit uh 
more complicated. It's got a whole book. Yeah. So more of like a fit rep or your NAM at the back. It has the codes. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great comparison. Mm -hmm. All right. What other questions do we have? So just refreshing um, from when we start, because you, mm -hmm. you reiterated it earlier. I just want to make sure I understand it. So from this general discrepancy report, you said there are two majors. So it's the SDR and that product quality report. I mean, deficiency report, right? Yes, and the then, SDR and the QDR. QDR. And then within SDR, that's the, the shipping and the packaging. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Now I understand it. Okay. Because you, you mentioned like within the SDR, I was like, what? <laughs> so it's like the brand <laughs> of it. Okay. Yes, Got it. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Moving on to submission time time long. And so before I start this, I want to say that you'll always want to check with your TICOM. So when I was at NECC, they advised us, even though if we had something outside of our our designated timelines, they wanted us to still submit it because they wanted to track any deficiencies. So we weren't expecting to be, we weren't expecting to receive those funds back, but NECC still wanted us to annotate it to make sure that we were solving problems. But according to the 485, you will want to Submit as soon as you notice the discrepancy. If it is a USPS item, it'll be 45 days. If it's from a commercial source, it is a 90 day. Now, a deadline for sum submitting SDR if your CONUS is 45 days and OCONUS 90 days. So there's sir. Yes. Uh, sorry, another question. Um, so if it's shipped by government and if if it's corners, it we cannot that forty five days is the date we can start filing, right? That is the when it needs to be submitted, completed. Completed. Okay. Oh, yes. okay. So if it says if it, it was shipped from government last week and then uh, um, it doesn't show up delivered this week, could we start filing the SDR or we have to wait for a couple of weeks? Like, is there any timeline we can start filing? So you would only file it if they had said it had been received. So if it's just lost in shipment you'll wait until well you're it's kind of a tricky situation because you have to assess whether it's lost in shipment or if it's just delayed so okay. you will have to track that down and once you determine for sure that it has been lost then you can submit okay so i don't have to wait for 45 days because that's no, absolutely not complete. you don't okay. want to wait for 45 days Okay. Uh, but that's why we're seeing follow-ups during the process and try and track our packages. And that's why our our MOF and our MOV process is so important so that we can keep a good track on those. So if something is lost, that we can submit, hey, this has been lost, and we can recover those funds. I see. Thank you, sir. What other questions do we have about submission timelines? All right, moving on to the control log. So again, I mentioned that these are required to be logged in PD rep, and that creates a file for you. Depending on your inspectors, sometimes they like to see a manually managed log, like one that's in the workshop, so that you can see it with the SDRs, and then some people will just take it printed out from the system. So 
that's a conversation you probably want to have, and it probably spells it out in your Thai common chart. With your control log, you're going to simply put in the SDN number, the item, uh, the data is processed, when it was completed, and remarks. And you'll keep a continuous log for each item. You'll keep two years of the control logs on file. So your current period, um, you'll keep that for two FYs. And then you will maintain a separate file for each of those years. So you'll have a file for the current year and a file for the last year. Are there questions about the prologue for the SDR? All right, so just to recap for the SDR, if there is anything from a commercial vendor that has a shipping discrepancy or a packaging discrepancy, no matter the dollar value, you'll submit an SDR. If it is from a government source, it is $100 and above for shipping discrepancy, $50 above for packaging. There are also a lot of other stipulations or circumstances that you can find in the P485, but those are the two main categories. We also have timelines. Uh, if you are CONUS, 45 days is your requirement for submitting the SDR and 90 days if you're OCONUS. And so it's kind of hard to tell on those days because it is date, days from discovery. And so um, the sooner the better, obviously, but you want to make sure that you are doing your research before submitting because you don't want to go through the problems of submitting and then it show up at your command. and then you keep your log for two years. All right, moving on to the quality deficiency, unless we have questions. Sir, um, it's MJ yeah. here. For your log, did you um, do this like in a binder form or is it electronic? So we had originally had ours in paper form, and then our inspector told us that we could just print it out from PD rep. So then we just had a printed copy. But where do you keep them? Like, is it like maintaining like for, okay, so each fiscal year and then you put it away. So it's not the rest like others are like for two years. Yeah. So you have a, a log for each year. So when we did it all by hand, we had everything in a binder. Um, and at that mm -hmm. command, we had all the all the program binders were on the shelves and labeled. So everybody yeah. knew where everybody's programs were. And then they were uh -huh. had the fiscal year listed on them. So anybody could oh. find them. Um, gotcha. but yeah, so we had an individual for that year. You would pull it and then you would have the paper copy in there of the logs. And we made so them in Excel originally. LS... Sorry, what'd you say? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Is this maintaining the LS office? Yes. Got you. So, okay. so it's not maintained by the QA department. Uh, so we did not have a QA department. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Any other questions? All right, moving on to the QDR. So the purpose of the QDR is to um, report anything that comes, that we purchase that shows up incorrect. So it's out of spec, it doesn't fit, uh, it could be dangerous, it does not meet form, fit, or function. Those are the three big words um, that they focus on, form, fit, and function. 
Now, QDRs are a little bit more difficult to detect. Pretty obvious when you open a box and something is destroyed or you get the box and the box is damaged or you're missing something. Those are all pretty obvious. But when a gasket is millimeters off of spec or something along those lines, it's very hard to tell. And so you're typically going to get this information from your maintainer. They will notice whenever they pick up the part or whenever they go to install it and it doesn't fit. So um, I like to think of the, this as like car parts. So if you buy like a car, universal car part, lots of times it won't fit. Uh, just, just the nature of it. They try and sell it to everybody, but it doesn't fit everything without some serious modification. So if you get a product in, you try it on whatever system that you have, and it it kind of seems like it would work, but it doesn't actually when you go to attach it, that's when you have that quality deficiency. QDRs are also maintained in the PD rep system. So QDRs and SDRs both maintain in PD rep. All right. The purpose of the QDR is to identify deficiencies, um, find trends, and um, make sure that we're receiving safe material. And there are two types of QDRs, kind of like there's two types of SDRs. And those two types of QDRs go into categories. So there's category one, which means that it is that the quality deficiency is dangerous. It can result in death, loss of major weapon system, um, or down in operation. Category two is anything that just doesn't work. And so it's pretty hard to see on this PowerPoint, but if you go to, let me scroll through the instruction here real fast. Three page, electronic page 398. There is an example of the QDR. And beneath that QDR, there's a complete description of how to fill it out. So one of the things I did want to explain before we run out of time is blocks 16B. So 16B is asking about Deficient item works on which system? So you're going to see end item or next higher assembly. And next higher assembly is for something that is a piece of equipment. So say, uh, very simple, you ordered a bolt. It does not match the quality requirements. It needed to be gold and it came in silver. And then, so that bolt goes to a table. So that next higher assembly is the table. It is the part that that repair part is. Does that make sense to everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. And then block 17, that unit cost, you'll get that from that log. But again, on page 398, there is a very thorough breakdown of each one of these blocks. And then um, there's an example on 398. Below that, there is a thorough breakdown. Also in block 22 are details. You want to make sure that you give as much information as possible. And that includes, so PD, 
rep allows for you to add attachments or images and you you can submit those and that will help in the process again you're wanting to put out the who what where when why and how um, and what you know happened to the best of your ability not what you think what you know uh, so you're not required to offer any possible solutions for this one like with the sda Then again, the QDR has a very similar control log and you will have this maintained on file for two years. The SDR, QDR are quality control tools and they're also cost saving tools for the Navy. And the QDR is really a life saving tool. Um, if you're not reporting this and multiple people are getting it, maybe somebody will find out a way to install it or not notice the issue, and you can have an engine blow up or um, something of that nature. It, it's very serious, and you need to take it seriously when it comes back, because maybe it's not going into your plane or vehicle, but if you don't report it, it might go into somebody else's. What questions do we have about QDR? Uh, so this is Jesse. Um, so what if we receive a package um, has with like uh, it's deficient and it's like um, damaged, but it was caused by the um, caused by the package like the, how they boxed it. So should we file SDR also with the QDR or we just file, file the QDR? So you're saying in the scenario, it the material is quality deficient, but also the packaging showed up damaged when it got there? Yes, sir. Yeah, I would submit both. Okay. question. Okay. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> All right. Moving on to our last enabling objective, the defective material summary. And this is simply published by NAFSUP WSS monthly and identifies all the materials that they found that are deficient and it lists it by NSN. And so what you need to do whenever this is published is you need to you or one of the people in your shop need to review this list to your inventory and make sure that you do not have these items in stock. If you do have them in stock, you need to pull them from the shelf and NAFSUP WSS will give you disposition instruction. This is one of those things you don't want to skip because it's, uh, so if it's defective material and it ends up going in somebody's vehicle and uh, somebody gets killed because of it, uh, you don't want that weight on your shoulder because you didn't do your job. So this is like a recall list, right, sir? Absolutely. Yeah, and this is just saying um, upon defective material summary, you work it. Um, and then you follow the instructions on how to handle them. You want to make sure that they're separated from the stock and everybody knows that this is a DMS item. You don't want LS1 to pull all the DMS material and LSSN to be in there saying, oh, I just uh, saw this on the floor, so I decided to stock. It needs to be clearly labeled and separated. All right, what are the two major types of material discrepancies? SDR and QDR. Yeah, SDR and QDR. And then what are the two different kinds of SDRs? Packaging and shipping. That is correct. And then... Um, describe category one product quality, 
product quality deficiency reports, QDR. Quality deficiency, uh, which may cause death, injury, or severe occupational illness, or cause loss or damage, major damage to weapon system. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. So those are our questions. I do want to say that there is homework in the training guide, and that is page one tac two five one, one tac two five three. Uh, and the questions are pretty good. So I think it would be worth the time. And we have less than one minute. So I will stop the recording there.